Welcome to the third video in this series on using Substance 3D Modeler in VR. This will be an introduction to scene assembly, which is moving and arranging layers and groups. This includes the use of the select tool functions and working with multiple layers and groups. So far, we've only been working with the sculpting tools in a single stationary layer. If you want to move this layer around, you'll need the select tool. In the tool palette, you can switch to the select tool here. First thing to point out is the layer turning blue, which means the layer is selected. When you edit the contents of a single layer, it needs to be selected. But when you use sculpting tools on it, you don't want this blue visual. Select tool isn't a sculpting tool, so you can see the selection is blue. Deselect by pressing the select button, B, in empty space. You can grab and move this layer by hovering the cursor over the layer and pressing and holding the tool trigger. While held, you can scale it with the tool hand thumbstick up or down. You can also delete it with the A button on your tool hand. While grabbing something, you can flip what's held by pressing and holding the X button on your support hand. While the X button is held, if you move your support hand in a direction and release X, whatever is held will flip in that direction. This is relative to the parent origin, but since there's only one layer and no groups, that's the scene origin. Both delete and flip can be found as button options here and here. Selection is done with the B button while it's hovering the layer. And again, you can deselect by pressing B in empty space. To edit this layer, first select it, then switch to any sculpting tool. All right, we want to make new layers. There are multiple ways to do this, but to start, open the Actions menu. Up here is the New Layer option. Selecting it gives you this visual change. See this colored crosshair visual at the tool hand cursor? This is showing the new layer's origin, which will be placed at the center point of this first piece of clay. This is important, but we'll come back to it. Once you place the clay, you can edit it. While editing this current layer, notice how the other layer in the scene is a darker color. If you switch to the Select tool and deselect, all layers will show their correct color values. That's because we're viewing everything at scene assembly. But if you select the other layer and switch to the Clay tool to edit, there's visual focus on the layer being edited, and the darker layer can't be sculpted on. Let's make another new layer, this time using the option in the palette here. Before adding clay, we'll toggle on mirror symmetry. Notice how now the layer origin visual is snapped to the central plane of the scene. This means that any layers made with symmetry to start will all be lined up on this plane. This can be helpful if you want multiple symmetrical layers and want all of their symmetry axes aligned. We're currently editing this first new layer, which did not have symmetry on. A reminder that you can see a quick visual of the layer's origin by keeping the palette open. The origin is centered on where the first piece of clay is added, so that symmetry can be turned on later and still have your tools line up directly across the middle. If you make a new layer while currently editing a layer, it will adopt the properties of that layer. In this case, the new layer should already have the same symmetry setting turned on. It will also copy the resolution of the current layer. There's one last way to make a new layer. If you're not editing a layer and no layer is selected, when you switch to the clay tool, Modeler needs a new layer to place this clay into. So if you place some clay down, it will make one for you. Now that there's some more layers in the scene, you can select and interact with multiple layers. This is why it's called assembly or scene assembly, as in you can assemble the content of your scene. Multi-select by holding the support trigger and pressing B each time to add to the selection or you can press and hold B and swipe across a bunch of layers really quickly. Any select tool action or property changes will affect everything selected. Remember, you can deselect everything by pressing B in empty space. There's also a few other selection options here in the palette under the select tool, including the option to invert your selection. Select tool also has a magnet snap option. While holding a layer, if you press the B button, the origin of the layer being held becomes visible and can be snapped to other anchor points. Currently, anchor points are other layer origins or the scene origin. This can be helpful if you accidentally nudged a layer out of alignment. You can snap it back to a reference layer that you know. Often, you'll want to make copies of your layers. The simplest way of doing this is to duplicate, which can be found here in the Actions menu. It can also be found in the shortcuts here in the palette. It will duplicate anything selected in the exact same place and leave one copy selected. This makes it easy to make small variations in layers. The other way to copy layers is with the Select tool. 
When you press and hold the support trigger, instead of switching to the smooth tool, it allows you to grab and pull quick copies of a layer or selection using the tool trigger. Easy enough to do a couple of times, but if you want to do this even faster, reverse the actions. If you hold something and press the support trigger, you can quickly stamp copies of the layer down. This can fill up your scene very quickly. With all these layers lying around, you'll want to group them. Do this by selecting the layers you want, pop open the Actions menu, and group them here. There's also a shortcut button here. This group now acts as one unit. You can grab it, move it, scale it, and copy it, just as you would a single layer. To edit the contents of the group, you'll need to enter it or scope into it. First, push and hold the support hand thumbstick forward. This gives you a blue laser that can be pointed at things like this group. While pointing at a group, release the thumbstick to scope in. Note that everything outside of the group is now darker because the focus is inside the group. Now you can move elements around from within the group. You can view the group's origin by opening up the palette while inside. The origin will be an average of the elements of the group when it was first created. To step out or scope out of the group, pull the support hand thumbstick back. From here, the group can be interacted with as a whole. If you want to change the contents of a group, you could ungroup it, found here, and here. Or you can grab the elements you want and take them with you when you scope in or out of the group. We'll select these layers here, and while holding them, push the support hand thumbstick forward, point at the group you want to scope into, and release. You've now taken what you are holding into the group. You can take any number of layers, including other groups. Here, let's make another group within this one. And you edit this group the same way, by scoping into it. When you scope out, you're back in the first group. When you scope out again, you're back at the scene level. This is a fast way of jumping between groups and nested groups. Here's an example of a more complex scene. You can also use the same scoping action as a shortcut to editing layers. Instead of selecting a layer and switching to a sculpting tool, you can point this laser at a single layer and immediately begin editing it with the last sculpting tool that was used. You can also use it while editing a layer to quickly jump to and edit another layer. There's one quick way to make a group. If you grab and hold something and try to scope into that layer, Modeler will create a group out of what you're holding and the layer. A unique result of this is that the group's origin will be the same as the layer you scoped into, instead of an average between the two. This is important for repetitions, but those will be covered in a later video. With layers and groups being covered, this helps to explain gizmo orientation. By default, the gizmo follows the orientation of what you're currently editing. So if you're editing clay in a layer, it will orient to the layer's origin when it's reset. In the palette, there are options at the bottom to change this so that orientation is based off the parent, which could be the group the layer is inside, or the scene origin. With a complex scene, you'll want to access things that are tucked away without moving them. In the Actions menu, this section gives you the option to show or hide layers. Hide will only affect what's selected. Any layers or groups that are hidden cannot be affected by tools. Show All will make any hidden content visible and leave them selected. So if you want to quickly hide them again, you don't need to reselect them. Both Hide and Show can be used quickly with a shortcut. While using the Select tool, if the Support trigger is held, the A button changes from Delete to Hide or Show. A hovered or selected layer is hidden. Hovering empty space with nothing selected will show all. Isolate Scope works on the current group or parent of the current layer. So if you're in a group, it will hide everything not in the group. And if you're editing a layer in a group, it will hide everything outside of the group that it's in. The last thing to cover here is Merge, which can be found in the Actions menu here, and also on the side of the tool palette. Merge brings every layer or group or combination selected down to a single layer. Creating and merging multiple groups is a pretty common workflow. Here you can see several forms created in separate layers, then selectively merging and smoothing. 
And that will wrap up part three in this series on using Modeler in VR. Next up, in part four, we'll be covering the rest of the sculpting tools available.